So in the last lecture, we uh, looked at average consensus and consensus algorithms, right? And one of the things that we saw was the role of the topology plays an or the structure of the underlying network that plays an important role, right? So when we ran uh, the discretized consensus algorithm for one particular choice of A matrix, it, it had a consensus, but it did not converge to the average consensus value, right? And for the other choice of A, it converged to the average consensus value. So, and the conditions that we derived was, so when do we guarantee average consensus? So what are the sufficient conditions? When do we guarantee average consensus? So A is row stochastic. Okay, which implies that lambda is equal to 1 is an eigenvalue. Okay, then we want underlying graph to be connected. Is connected, which implies What does this imply? Lambda is equal to 1 is a simple eigenvalue, right? Okay. And A is symmetric. Which implies average consensus. So with just these two, you guarantee consensus. But if you have uh, A to be symmetric, that means A is also doubly stochastic, both row stochastic as well as column stochastic, then you can guarantee average consensus. Okay. So how do we construct such A? So one particular approach is using something called Sinkhorn norms. Does anyone know what Sinkhorn Nobs algorithm is? So let's say you are given a matrix A, a non-negative matrix A, okay. So what do we mean by that? There will be bunch some zeros and a lot, uh, some uh, non some positive values, okay. So it's a non-negative matrix. It's a square matrix, uh, okay. Now what Sinkhorn Knopf's algorithm does is, so in the first iteration, you are going to do row normalization or rather that is normalization by row sum. So that means you are going to get these row sums. Let's say this is, this gives you R1, this gives you R2 r3 and so on and then you construct a new a let's call it a plus okay which is going to be this divided by r1 0 r1 and so on likewise this entry entry divided by r2 so you, you are going to do a simple row norm, row sum normalization of every row okay so that it it becomes row stochastic okay so that's step 1 Step two is column normalization or column sum normalization by column sum. So this A plus matrix that you have now obtained. So you are going to be obtaining column sums of this particular matrix and then you are going let us say these column sums are C1, C2, C3 and so on. So you are going to be constructing a new matrix A++ which is just going to be uh, A plus divided by this column sum C1, C2. Okay. So the respective columns are going to be divided by 
these column sums. So now it becomes column stochastic. But then it, it need not be row stochastic anymore, right? Because now you have divided this by column sums. So it need not be row stochastic. But it turns out that if you keep repeating this process, so row, row, make, it, make it row stochastic followed by column stochastic, row stochastic, column stochastic. If you keep repeating this multiple times, for a non-negative matrix, it will eventually converge to a doubly stochastic matrix. Okay, so this is what Syncon Nobs algorithm is. So we repeat the steps one and two until convergence. And this basically gives you doubly stochastic matrix. So this is one particular way to obtain doubly stochastic matrix and uh, this is often used, let us say when we talk about, so in the context of machine learning, I mean this is aside from the course, uh, let us say I am trying to, so everyone knows what traveling salesman problem is. So traveling salesman problem is, let us say you have these uh, nodes that need to be visited by a salesman or a postman, let us say. And in such a manner, so that the total distance, so every node is visited just once and the total length of travel is minimized. So, and then wherever the salesman start, it starts, the, basically he or she needs to, uh, I mean, end their uh, trajectory at the same point. So, for instance, let us say this is the, this turns out to be the optimal sort of route, which minimizes the total travel distance. So, in general, it is an NP hard problem, right? And if you look at, uh, but then if I try to try to look at this uh, solution to this particular thing, what does this turn out? Let us say this is city 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So from 1, I need to go to 2, let us call it 7. So from 1, I need to go to 2 and from 5, I need to go to 1, right? Right? So, you can see that uh, this matrix is a special class of W stochastic matrix with exactly one entry being positive and every, every other entry being 0. Right? So, if you know what softmax is in context of neural network, if I have a W stochastic matrix as a softmax kind of matrix and I just keep doing a repeated Syncon Knobs algorithm on top of it, then you would hope that eventually this converges to my 1 0 kind of uh, matrix that I want. And this would be one way to generate solution to a graph structure traveling salesman kind of problem. So the Syncon Snops algorithm is often used uh, when you want to, when your decision space is a stochastic, a row stochastic matrix or a doubly stochastic matrix. So Syncon Snops algorithm is often used on these logits or the softmax scores. So that's that's just an aside thing, but this is where you can see the role of doubly stochastic matrix coming in. But what is the shortcoming of this? Like, let's say if I want to use Syncon knobs for generating a W stochastic matrix, what is the shortcoming of this approach? Small what? That is that is fine. I mean, I mean, how does it matter? Because everything is going to be row and column knob. Like everything is going to be row stochastic and W stochastic. So even So usually in practice, I mean, you mean the this this particular thing is how. So this is this is usually like six seven iterations are enough. So it's not really about that. So not so much on the entries, but uh, number of non-zero entries and zero entries is what it would depend on. But that aside, what is a bigger sort of difficulty in working, let us say you are trying, I mean there are multiple agents in the network and they are trying to, I mean your goal is to be able to arrive at, uh, let us say as a centralized, I mean you, there is no centralized entity. So you do not know anything about the topology, you know what, how your neighbors are, right? You know, know, you know about your connectivity and maybe to some extent you can talk to your neighbors and figure out their connectivity, but you do not know the connectivity of the entire graph, right? So if I for doing this row normalization and column normalization, I would actually need to do that, know that. In order to compute the row sum, I need to 
know how my neighbors are also connected to other agents and so on and likewise column sums and so on right so i would need to know the entire topology and that means i i assume that there is an entity like a centralized entity which has access to all the information and that is something that anyway we we want to get away with so this is not a very viable approach uh, for constructing uh, in a matrix that is uh, row stochastic symmetric and uh, also guarantee that guarantees that well i mean underlying graph is connected is the property of the graph so we are going to assume that the graph is connected but this is not a very good way to generate the stochastic matrix so in the example uh, So you can assume that if there is an edge, then you place one, otherwise zero. And you can start with that. Yeah. Yeah, graph. You are going to be assuming that the graph. Otherwise, there, there is. I mean, you cannot reach consensus if the graph is not connected, right? So, okay. So if you remember that example of the temperature sensors, so I think it was something like this, and. The underlying topology was something like this, right? So, what kind of A did we choose in the first case? So, it was half and half, 0, 0. Now, 2 is connected to every, so we just had 1 fourth each. 3 is connected to 2 and 4. So, 0, 1 third, 1 third, 1 third, and likewise 4, 0. And what is it really trying to do? So, suppose I multiply this with x1, x2, x3 and x4 and this basically gives me new new x, right? xi, let us say x1, k plus 1, x2, k plus 1, to x4, k plus 1, this basically gives me new xi. So, according to this, it basically tells you that xi, k plus 1 is going to be an average of your own estimate and your neighbor's estimate, right? Likewise, x2 k plus 1, this is going to be an, an average of x1 k. So, your own estimate and then your neighbor's estimates. And you weigh all of them equal. Like in this case, we have an equal weighting for all the information that we have in the uh, Similarly, x3 k plus 1 is going to be x2 k ok. Now, if I look at this particular matrix, this is definitely row stochastic, right? But this is not column stochastic and that is why we saw that when we ran this consensus algorithm which is xk plus 1 is a times xk, it converged to the uh, common consensus value but it did not converge to the average consensus value that we wanted it to converge to right. And for that we had a different choice of a and let me tell you I mean let me also tell you how to construct such an a. So, we are going to be using something called metropolis weighting scheme. And it goes something like this. So, Aij Okay. So, Aij is going to be 1 over 1 plus max of the degree of the ith node and the degree of the jth node. Now, this is a local piece of information, right? You can talk to your neighbor, you can ask his or her degree and that way you will be able to ascertain whichever, whichever one is the maximum quantity. So, you do not need to know the entire topology. 
So con in constructing AIG, I just need to know the degree of my neighbors and myself, right? And that's it. And I would know of my degree because I know who, who are my neighbors. So I know of my degree, the number of agents that I'm connected with. My neighbor would know the number of agents that he or she is connected with. And this way, uh, you can ex estimate this information or you can exactly obtain this particular information, max of di, comma dj, uh, without having to know the entire topology, right? So in this case, agent i need not know about the entire topology of the network. Likewise, agent j also does, or any agent for that matter, it doesn't need to know the entire topology of the network. Is this clear? So what would be the A matrix in this case? So let's first look at A12. Now what is the degree of the first of node 1? 1, 2 is 3 and 3 and 4 are 2. So A12 is 1 over, so max of 1 comma 3 is 3. So 1, 1 over 1 plus 3 which is 1 over 1 fourth and which basically gives you a11 is 1 minus of this and it becomes 3 fourth okay what about a21 now a21 again is going to be 1 fourth because it's it's again going to be max of 1 comma 3 in fact 2 has the highest degree which is 3 so for that matter a23 is also going to be 1 fourth and a24 is also going to be 1 fourth which implies A22 is going to be 1 minus all of this, which is also going to be 1 fourth. Okay. Now we talk about A, well, A31 is not going to be there because 3 is not connected to 1. So that is going to be 0. What about A23 or A32? This is going to be 1 fourth. What about A34? Both have degree 3, both have degree 2 each, so it is going to be 1 third. So A34 is going to be 1 third and then therefore A33 is going to be which is 512, right? And likewise A42 is going to be 1 fourth, A43 is going to be 1 third and A44 is going to be 5 twelfth. And now if you, if I try to construct this A, this A turns out to be 3 fourth, 1 fourth, 0, 0. So this is 0, 0 and you have A32. Okay, and in fact, this is precisely the matrix that we had used in the second algorithm. And you can also verify this is W stochastic, symmetric W stochastic, and uh, therefore you can guarantee average consensus. Is this clear? So this is the metropolis. In fact, this is often used in uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo. This kind of metropolis scheme. This is often this metropolis weighting scheme is often used and that's why the name come that's where the name comes from but the idea is this is how you're going to be locally constructing your matrix without having to know so in just uh, one round of uh, communication you would be able to know uh, the degrees of every every node like of your neighbor neighboring nodes and you would be able to construct this okay any questions on this so this algorithm that you are going to be running is xk plus 1 is a times xk and this would guarantee average consensus assuming the graph is connected with metropolis weighting. Okay. I 
I mean, technically, we you can do that. You can apply the same. I mean, in that case, you have to be careful about the in degree and the out degree rather. Uh, so, since you are going to be exchanging information with your neighbors, or you are going to be communicating with the neighbors, so you would have to. I think uh, in that case, you would have to just focus on out degree. And I think it should be fine. The only thing is, uh, you need in that case, you need the underlying graph to be strongly connected and not just connected for for you to be able to guarantee average consensus. So this is the discrete time consensus algorithm. So in the rest of the lecture, we are going to sort of look, since we had studied stability of dynamical system, so we are going to look at the standard consensus algorithm in continuous time and then we are going to look at the fixed time variant of it. So focus is. Because in consensus you so average consensus is important because I mean you just like let's say you are gossiping among yourself and if you converge to some belief that you cannot track for instance I mean then there is no point right everyone just says that I am 0 like let's say I mean you are trying to estimate the number of uh, uh, number of MNMs inside an MNM packet and you do no one knows the exact number but maybe you have an idea so your neighbors may have an idea and then you are trying to converge to a useful number right and that would be an average of everyone's beliefs. Now this like now like I mean if you just want to run a consensus then you can just say that I have like there are zero uh, MNM uh, candies inside this packet and if everyone does so you are at a consensus value right but it's of no use. But what if suppose we want the, the system to track something? Yeah so so if so I mean in fact we will come to that so when you mix this average consensus scheme with uh, with another another scheme which let's say you are trying to optimize a function and you are trying to track the optimal optimizer of it then i mean it's not just the average consensus part that is important and in fact you would see that this average would also move in some sense so the quantity that remains sh that should ideally remain invariant is the summation of xi's and that that you want to be i mean that you want you this want hey, the yeah average to one was yeah, the yeah right so you want that to kind of remain invariant and that is what we are going to look at. So we are going to look at standard consensus algorithm first. So in continuous time consensus. And then we are going to look at FXTS. So in fact, uh, again in continuous time. In fact, you would see that uh, in, in this context, in the context of continuous time algorithms, I mean you do not need this special structured A. So this would, this makes sense when you are running discrete time algorithms. For continuous time algorithms, this uh, special type of A is not even needed. So let's, let's take an example, let's say this, consider a very simple graph like this, okay. What is the adjacency matrix for this undirected unweighted graph? So the A11 is 0, there are no self loops, so 1 to 2 is 1, right, again you have 1s here and then you have, so this is not a doubly stochastic matrix, right, in fact there is, I mean unlike the previous case where we wanted A to be, I mean you can see that there are self edges, right, 3 4th, 1 4th, 5 12th and 5 12th then no self edges here. Suddenly we are not going to run the dynamics x dot is some a x. So this is this is not some this is not the consensus algorithm that we are going to be running. So instead okay so let's let's also look at these quantities as well. So what is the degree matrix? And this so 1 to 1 okay and Let's also look at the Laplace chain, which is d minus a, and it's going to be 
1 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 and then you have 0 minus 1 1. This is the Laplacian. And what is one property of Laplacian? Symmetric is 1 and then Laplacian times a vector of 1 is so 0 is a set like if the graph is connected then 0 is a simple eigenvalue of the Laplacian right. So if I have multiplied this with vector of 1s this is going to give me zeros. Okay. So let us also do one thing let us multiply this Laplacian with this quantity x1 x2 x3 right and let us see the output. So the first entry is x1 minus x2 second entry is uh, 2x2 minus x1 minus x3 the third entry is x3 minus x2 okay which is another and another way to write this is x1 minus x2 this is x2 minus x1 plus x2 minus x3 and this is x3 minus x2. So that means agent, so if I multiply any vector x, so this is my vector x, if I multiply this vector x with this Laplacian, what is it really doing? Basically agent i is, x, is basically subtracting agent j's belief from its own belief, right? And if in case they have multiple neighbors, they are going to be getting the relative belief and just adding those up, okay? So this computation if I do, if I say L times X, if I define this to be, this is one, let us say this is my computation. This computation is simply local, right? Because I can subtract uh, my neighbor's beliefs from my own belief and this is what I am doing, right? And just summing, summing those relative quantities. So this computation is completely local. So for, in this case, for instance, agent 1 does not need to know about what happens for agent with agent 3, right? So these computations are local. Okay. And when is this quantity 0? Let us say when would this result in 0 when x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x3 all are like essentially the vector of 1s right if the graph is connected it should uh, I mean it should be collinear with the vector of 1s right. So that means x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x3 is equal to z. So that pretty much gives you an idea how to run a consensus algorithm and the continuous simple the standard continuous algorithm or standard algorithm, uh, algorithm for consensus in continuous time is x dot is simply negative of l of x okay. So first of all, let us look at the equilibrium of this dy particular dynamical system. Yeah, yeah. so that is what we are looking at. So what is the equilibrium of this dynamical system? So when x dot is equal to 0. So that means L of x is equal to 0. So this implies x is basically some alpha times vector of 1s, right? Okay, so this is the equilibrium. So you know that if the trajectories they converge to the equilibrium of this dynamical system, then the agents are going to be in consensus. We haven't said anything about average consensus yet, but we know that the agents are going to be in consensus. Okay, is this clear? Okay, so let's see what happens if I try to. Let's say the agents they run this locally, right? So when I say x x dot is negative of l of x, essentially from the perspective of ith agent, it's just doing local computations. Okay, so what is this quantity? Okay. 
okay which is going to be hmm? here xj right lij xj that that is what you are doing another right adding the yeah if i do one transposal what is this quantity which is yeah which is it is zero right okay so what is this quantity this is nothing but one transpose x dot so one transpose l that is zero why because if i if i i can just sum it over lij summation i equal to 1 lij and that is going to be zero okay so this is going to be zero since summation i equal 1 through n lij is going to be zero for every j. one is both the left and the right vector of ones is both the left and the right eigen vector for uh, this laplace so one transpose l is a zero is going to give you zero zero vector okay so that means this particular quantity is equal to zero so therefore summation i equal 1 through n xit is going to be constant because the time derivative of this is zero which means this is equal to summation i equal 1 through n xi zero okay so the summation is going to be constant always if you run the standard consensus algorithm the summation of xi is always going to be constant and now if everyone converges to the same value let's say everyone converges to the same value which is going to be n times x star because everyone converges to the same value so then the consensus value turns out to be x star is 1 over n summation i equal 1 to n x i 0 which implies average consensus okay okay so why did we use x dot as negative alex and not positive alex it would have been the same thing right yeah so why because l is supposed to be positive semi definite matrix right so if i look at the solution to this xt xt is matrix exponentially to the negative lt times x not right and l is l we know is positive semi definite matrix with zero being a simple eigen value simple and eigen value if graph is connected okay so this basically tells you that you want this dynamics to be stable and because l all the eigen values of l are greater than or equal to 0 so you want this dynamics to be stable and that's why uh, that's why we work the standard consensus algorithm is x dot is negative of l of x l times x okay even though we write this in a vectorized form from the perspective of individual agent i so agent i is simply running this is what agent i is running so this, these computations are local computations even though it may look like that x dot i am writing this in a nice uh, vector form but then agent i is basically running this particular dynamics and if i try to combine everyone else's dynamics so you get this x dot is negative of lx irrespective of the matrix a so as long as the graph is connected so any this would happen for any matrix. Okay. 